In this video, we'll take a look at how to go about configuring a packet filtering firewall. There are plenty of packet filtering firewall solutions out there. Some are newer, some are older, some are command line based, some are GUI based through a web interface. It just goes on and on. We're going to start by taking a look here at the built-in Windows Server Operating System Firewall. So I'm going to go to my Windows Start menu and type in Fire, and I'm going to click on Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. Here in this tool, I can see on the left, I've got a number of inbound rules, as well as a number of outbound rules to control traffic leaving this server. If I go back to inbound rules, you'll notice that the icon to the left of some of the rule names looks like a green circle, which means it's a rule that's enabled, whereas others look like a golden padlock, which means it's a rule that only allows access if there's some kind of a secured connection, either using IPsec or maybe the rule is configured to only allow connections from certain user accounts or computers. Any rules that have a grayed out icon are disabled. So we're going to go ahead and right click on inbound rules on the left and choose new rule. We're going to build a rule to allow inbound SSH traffic. Now there's not an SSH service by default in the Windows Server OS, but certainly we could install one. So let's assume that we've got one installed and we want to allow connections to it. So we're going to go ahead and choose port. We could also alternatively have built a firewall rule based on a program or from the predefined list of common things that are done, or we could build a custom rule. Here it's going to be a port, so I'll choose that and I'll click Next. We know that SSH uses TCP port 22, so I'm going to go ahead and specify that specific port. But notice in the example, I could have a comma-separated list of ports I want to allow through this rule, or a range of ports with the starting and ending range, and of course it is inclusive. So I'm going to go and click on Next. I want to allow the connection, although I could choose Allow the connection if it's secure. Again, I could do that for... IPsec or to make sure that only certain user accounts or SSH connections can only come from certain computers. I could also block the connection, but in this case I want to allow it. So I'll go ahead and click Next. In Windows, we have various profiles that apply depending on if the user is connected to an Active Directory domain network, a private network, or public. So what I want to do here is make sure that this only applies when people have their computers at work. Or in this case, where it's a server, it would never be on a different network, like at Starbucks or on a home private network. So I'll go ahead and click Next. I'm going to call this Allow Inbound SSH. And I'll go ahead and click Finish. And we can see now in the list, we've got an active rule. It's got the green circle with the white check mark called Allow Inbound SSH. Now, of course, we could do this from the command line using PowerShell commandlets if we really wanted to. However, let's take a look at how we would configure a simple packet filtering rule on the Linux platform. Most Linux distributions support the old IP tables command as a way of configuring packet filtering firewall rules, although there are other options including graphical ways of configuring tools. Here we're going to type IP tables dash uppercase L for list. Here we can see that our input chain has a policy of accept, so it's going to accept everything from anywhere going to anywhere on this host. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure it only allows SSH. So I'm going to type IP tables dash A. I want to add an input rule item for dash P protocol is TCP. I want to match TCP dash M and the destination port or D port is going to be 22 because that's what SSH uses. So then dash J space accept. I don't want to drop. I want to accept that traffic. And I'm also going to add another rule here. So IP tables dash capital A in the input chain dash J drop. Basically, all I want to allow is inbound SSH and drop everything else. So now if I type IP tables dash capital L for list, I can now see that we're allowing inbound SSH for the TCP destination port and then dropping everything else. Let's test to see if that's actually working correctly. Before we test this, let's type ifconfig to see what our IP address is. And here we can see clearly it's 192.168.1.91. Okay, let's go test it. From a different computer, I'm going to ping 192.168.1.91. And notice, of course, we don't get a response because that traffic should be dropped. The only thing allowed into that Linux host is SSH. So naturally, we're going to try 
to use uh, PuTTY to open up an SSH session to that same IP address. So we can see we're going to open up an SSH session on port 22 on that same IP address. So I'll go ahead and click open. And after a moment, it asks me to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and specify the appropriate credentials. And we are in. Again, if we do an IP tables dash L for list, we can see the rules that are in place to make this happen. Another type of packet filtering solution is in the cloud. Here, I'm connected to my Amazon Web Services account where I'm viewing one of my VPCs or virtual private clouds called PubVPC1. A VPC is just a network that you've defined in the cloud. But what's interesting is that you can define a network ACL or access control list for each VPC in the Amazon Web Services cloud. The same types of things are possible with other cloud providers like Microsoft Azure as well. So having that VPC selected here in the list, I'm going to go down and click on the link next to Network ACL. That's going to open up another window where we can actually start to work with the packet filtering rules for this network, which actually exists in the cloud. Having my Network ACL selected down below, I can see the Inbound Rules tab, where we have a list of inbound rules, which in this case is allowing traffic from anywhere into the network. In the same way, we've got outbound rules to control traffic leaving this cloud network. So I'm going to go back to the inbound rules tab and click the edit button. What we want to do here is change our first rule to allow not all traffic, but in our example, only SSH port 22 traffic. And I'll leave the source as 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which means from anywhere. And we don't want this second custom rule being built here, so I'll click the X to remove that, and I'll click save. Now, after a moment, that network ACL for that cloud virtual network is now saved, and we can see down below that we are allowing inbound SSH traffic, but blocking everything else, because the second rule is a deny rule. In this video, we learned various ways to configure packet filtering firewalls.